Hi, I'm Katie Schof. I'm the Associate Director of Grants, Resources, and Services in the Office of Research here at Appalachian State University. And I'm going to talk to you today about the Board of Trustees International Travel Grant offered through the Office of Research on an annual basis to support um, international research uh, conducted abroad outside of the United States. So as I mentioned, the sole purpose of this grant is to support international research here at the university and specifically to support travel to certain locations. So each year we award up to four grants at $2,500 a piece, um, and that $2,500 is to offset specific travel costs, so flights, um, per diem, lodging, things of that nature. Um, the funding period is March 16th through April 30th of the subsequent year, so you have a little bit longer than a year in which to travel and to con complete the travel. And then the deadline for the grant is always uh, noon on the first Thursday of February annually. The grant is, sub is intended to support travel to, to various different research locations. Um, among them are libraries, museums, labs, different natural settings um, to collaborate with other institutions or researchers. And they have to be, this travel has to be essential to the research that's described in the proposal. So there are some limitations to what the travel, um, the research travel can be used for. You can't use it to disseminate results. So you can't go to conferences um, with this with this travel money specifically. Um, you have to be going to conduct research or to collect data or to um, do uh, planning for a research project that is forthcoming. So you can't use the funds um, to conduct research that's required for a degree or certificate, for example. Um, it has to be scholarship that you are doing um, as part of your work um, as a scholar uh, working for Appalachian State. And you cannot also um, purchase research supplies or pay people on the grant. It has to be specifically travel expenses. So like I said, uh, flights, per diem, lodging, things of that nature. So there are several elements that you'll be asked to complete as part of the online application for the Board of Trustees International Research Travel Grant. Um, and you have to disclose current and past internal grant awards. They may or may not be related to the project at hand. We just wanna know um, internal grants that you have received. They may be Office of Research internal grants, or they could be a college or departmental internal grants, wh whichever way, well, all, all inclusive here. So include everything that you can. And we also need to know about your current and pending external support. So any external grant activity or fellowship activity that you have that's related to the project, we'd like to know about. If you are resubmitting a, a, a Board of Trustees International Research Travel Grant application, you have the opportunity to um, address reviewer comments in a resubmission statement. This is not required, um, but we do ask that you indicate if it is a resubmission, at least in this resubmission statement box, if it is, in fact, a resubmission. We ask you to upload a CV, an abbreviated CV, a two-page um, CV that um, really highlights why you would be a successful, while well, you're the best person to conduct this research and to do this project, to show your expertise and highlight your experience. There's also the op option to upload some additional supplemental documents, um, and we'll talk about those in a little bit more detail, but these are typically references, bibliographies, um, things of that nature, uh, it, letters of invitation from host institutions or organizations or um, sites uh, and things like that. And then your chair also has to indicate that they understand that you're traveling for research purposes. Um, and so there's just a chair acknowledgement element as well. So we're gonna go into the each component. So the narrative, um, in the narrative, we recommend that you include several parts. And so I'm gonna go through each of these parts. I think there may have been a slide I missed. I did indeed. So um, yes, so in the narrative, you have four typed double spaced pages using Times New Roman 12 point font and one inch margins. We ask that you adhere to these specifications for consistency for, for your peer reviewers that will be looking over um, all of these consistency is helpful. Um, as elements of the narrative, we ask that you include an abstract. Um, a section on background or preliminary data, like a lit review, 
um, a project design section, research travel planning section, expanded expected outcomes, products and benefits, and a sustainability section. And I'm gonna talk about these all in more detail, but this is the recommended outline. You do not have to use this outline, but it is the recommended outline. So in the abstract, it's important that you open up your narrative with a quick overview, a brief one paragraph overview of the background problem, goals and objectives, strategy and significance of your project. This really helps um, reviewers understand the impact and the immediacy of your need to conduct this research, which makes you more competitive. The background um, preliminary data section should cover relative literature and identify the gap um, that exists and, and makes a more compelling argument for why you need to conduct this project at this time um, in this place in particular. The project design, this should be the most specific um, part of your proposal and likely the one of the bigger sections. I would argue the only, the only larger section would maybe be your research travel planning because this is a specific travel grant. Um, but your project design needs to be very specific. You need to, um, again, reiterate how your project addresses the gap that you identified in the background or literature review section um, and talk about what the benefit is of your research and why it is that you need to go. I'm going to say this a lot because the argument for travel um, is particularly critical um, because if there is any indication or feeling that your work could be done without the physical travel of you to the location that you are proposing, then you will not be competitive for this grant. So um, in terms of research travel planning, I mentioned this probably needs to be the most robust part of your proposal. Um, you need to indicate everything, as much specific detail as you can manage. So we need to know where you're going to go, how you're going to get there, what are you going to use as transportation while you are wherever you are, um, how are you going to return, um, what are your lodging accommodations going to be? Um, have you really thought this through is what the reviewers are looking through? Have you laid the groundwork for this, for this travel to be successful and feasible? Um, things about immunizations, visas are important um, to understand if you need to, if you know you need to have a visa. Um, language ability, if you speak the language, um, if the language does not happen to be English, you need to indicate your level of proficiency. If you're going to need a cultural or a linguistic translator, um, make sure you indicate that um, and discuss all of the preparations and processes by which you're going to achieve all of these things. Um, and Board of Trustees, International Research Travel Grants can fund student assistance to come with you if you have enough money. $2,500 is not a ton of money, um, but if it can offset some of the costs for research assistance, then that is uh, possible as well. You can divvy up the travel costs for multiple people in the budget, but do understand that the budget is limited to $2,500 unless you're pairing it with another grant mechanism or internal funding. So the expected outcomes, products, and benefits is also a, a really critical section. This is where you um, really need to make your, your argument compelling for why your project is timely and important and impactful. And so we all we want to know not only how it's gonna benefit your research, how it may benefit the your department, our institution, our region, um, and address broader impacts. Is it going to have international impacts? What are those? Um, who are the populations that are going to be impacted um, by the outcomes of, of your work? And then sustainability of the project. So what happens at the end of this of this trip? Um, are you going to apply for another grant, for example? How are you going to disseminate the results? Is the project complete? Once you've done this travel, is there going to be an ongoing need for travel? And how are you going to address that? Are you going to apply for other funding mechanisms, funding opportunities to, to sustain the project? Or will it become self-sustaining after a partnership has been established or one visit has been conducted? <clears throat> So again, I'm reiterating that it needs to be four typed double spaced pages using Times New Roman 12 point font and one inch margins. This consistency is really important for our reviewers um, and formatting of all of the application materials and sending them to the reviewers. So remember that your reviewers are likely not going to be in your discipline. We do use broad disciplinary panels uh, for the Board of Trustees 
applications. So you'll either be reviewed by a STEM slash health panel, an arts slash humanities panel, or a social science slash education research panel. So just understand that these are going to be broad disciplinary panels. And so they very likely will not be experts in your particular field. And so your project, your proposal needs to be understandable by anyone, a well-educated generalist is what we say. You also really need to fully justify the need for travel, especially in this era after we have done so much remotely, there is going to be an assumption that there is increased capacity for conducting work remotely and a less of a need to send you physically to a location. Now, of course, there are reasons why you may need to physically go to a location, but you need to make sure that you are articulating those clearly um, for this particular proposal. Um, it's extra important, especially in the times that we live in. So you also need to explain what, why you need to go there. Um, so in addition to justifying the need for travel, you need to explain and describe the facilities or the materials or the locations or the people that you will be having access to when you go physically to these locations um, and, why, uh, and why it's important to your research and your creative activity. <clears throat> So in your budget, uh, we do have a budget template that you can use. All of, you can only request up to $2,500. If your total travel exceeds that, that is, that is fine and that's probably true, but please only do a budget for up to $2,500. So the total amount requested from the BOT should only be $2,500. So for example, if your flights are going to be $3,000 round trip and you're only asking for 2,500, put the flight um, total cost and the flight line item and just put $2,500 in the total. Um, <clears throat> and then explain that in your budget justification. All airfare has to be coach uh, airfare. There are Fly America regulations that you need to be familiar with um, that you can read about online. And your mileage and subsistence rates have to follow either the state guidelines for outer state travel or the US Department of State's foreign per diem rates. You can use either per diem rate um, is acceptable for our purposes. Um, the foreign per diem rates tend to be higher. Um, so if that more accurately reflects your need for travel, but remember the budget here for these grants is very limited. So understanding that you may only want to request the out of state rate um, to make it more economical for the grant to stretch a little bit further, um, but just understand that there are two different options. These are hyperlinked, but you can uh, find out the rates on our websites as well. So the budget narrative um, is limited to uh, 500 words for your budget narrative, which is basically one single spaced page in length, um, and you need to justify and describe each expense. Um, and that narrative box is built into the budget template. So the budget template is downloadable from the application portal itself, which is on the InfoReady review site, which is um, appstate.infoready, the number four.com. And that's appstate.infoready4.com is where the, where the application is um, when it's open. So these are the review criteria that uh, your peers are going to be utilizing to evaluate your proposal. Um, so they will be evaluating it on scientific, technical, and creative merit, the value of international travel, and evidence of appropriate preparation and planning. So it's really important that you lay the groundwork for this travel before you apply for the grant, understanding that you may not receive the grant and so that therefore may impact your ability to travel right away, but you need to understand costs, you need to have men may you need to have contacts in the area where you're going if that's necessary. You need to show evidence that you have made attempts um, and laid the groundwork for this project and, and trip to be successful. So there are other partners on campus that you'll need to work with both prior to submitting this proposal and after submitting the proposal if you're selected to go and that you just need to know about in general. So the Office of Research Protections, um, if you are funded, you will need to work with them um, in terms of export controls because export controls um, applies whenever an Appalachian State University 
um, employee travels outside of the country on university business, um, and if you're going to take anything with you. So this includes your laptop, right? So it may only be limited to your laptop, but it could also include lab equipment or other things that you're um, taking with you. It could be consumables, um, it could be any number of things that you're taking with you out of the country. And so if you are taking anything that's university owned um, to your destination, you will need to fill out a few forms for disclosure uh, for this export controls process. Same if you intend to bring anything back with you uh, from, the, from the host country um, or host destination. So you'll need to be familiar with the Office of Research Protections and the export controls process. The Office of International Education and Development are also our partners in this. So when you go abroad, uh, you will need to complete an international business uh, travel insurance policy and get one of those in place. That is not at any additional cost to you as an employee, but you do have to fill out the form to get it um, if you're traveling abroad on university purpose, on university business, excuse me. So. Um, they also can be very helpful in establishing contacts um, in your host country or the host location if you don't already have them. So if you know, for example, that you need to go to a certain place, um, but you don't have contacts at a local institution, it is likely that our OIED office has connections there and they can put you into touch in, in contact with them. So if you need um, if you need contact info for folks in OIED, um, you can reach out to me at grs at appstate.edu you and let me know that you need to be connected to somebody in OIED, or you can find them at international.appstate.edu. So I already kind of went into these things, but um, if you're going, um, if you're bringing items or information outside of the U.S. or back home to the U.S. from other places, you'll have to go through the export controls process. Dennis Gabriels is our export controls expert and his email address is here if you need to reach out to him. I also mentioned international business travel insurance as well, but OIED can also help you with information um, about visas and when those visas are required versus just a passport is necessary. Oftentimes it depends on your length of stay, um, but sometimes it, it doesn't matter. You need a visa whether or not um, you're going for a month or a week. Uh, safety and travel advisories are also up to date. They, you can also find information about COVID-related travel restrictions on their website right now um, because some countries have higher levels of restrictions than others, and the U.S. has different policies on different um, places in the world as well. So you'll need to understand those, and OIED has a ton of resources um, to that end as well. So if you have any questions after um, viewing this webinar, um, please email me um, at grs at appstate.edu. Um, and I would love to follow up with you and answer any further questions you have. I hope that this has been helpful and um, I look forward to talking to you soon.